Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and uh, DC Vertigo, you're fired, oh my gosh. So uh, this is issue five of Hex for Wives, it doesn't even matter, this whole thing is done. So there's one of these sayings, I forget where I first heard it, and it goes like, uh, uh, people don't get fired, people fire themselves. And uh, I used to kind of think that was BS until I you know, got into some, you know, leadership roles. And the first time I had to fire someone and, uh, it was awful. It was awful. I, I actually, after I fired them, I, uh, literally ended up in the fetal position for like three hours on the floor. Uh, it's my, uh, it felt terrible. It's like that line from undergive unforgiven with Clint Eastwood. It's like, you take everything a man has and everything you ever will have or something like that. It's like, but the, the reality is the guy fired himself. He went camping in the middle of the work week with no notice. This is a young guy. He's like, well, I went partying with my friends. And then we said, we should go camping. Most people would say this weekend. They said right now on a Tuesday night. And he was very confused. He's like, bro. It's like, what? That's the thing I could do. Um, but uh, Vertigo is... For all intents and purposes, or intensive purposes, uh, fired, or rather, it fired itself. Uh, this thing, like the Captain Marvel uh, a movie, was poisoned from the beginning. Bringing back DC Vertigo, nothing wrong with it. Bringing back DC Vertigo under a far left extremist uh, ideologue uh, like Andy Corey, who is editing most of these books. And uh, that's a problem. The fact that every single one of this has revolved around some sort of grievance politics, um, uh, you know, endless grievance is uh, stupid. So um, just going on down the line, you know, Border Town, one of the most racist, no, the race, the most proudly racist book. And it was hilarious to watch all these SJWs be shocked. Shocked. I'm shocked. And, oh, but they were also saying, I'm so shocked. Also, I knew all along. So that got destroyed because of Eric Esquivel's Olympic-level sexual harassment of every, everyone? <laughs> um, uh, then there was, oh, what were the other shit shows? Um, unfortunately, the best written one, uh, American Pie, American something, American Carnage, uh, is actually the lowest selling. Of all of them, you had, um, what else did you have? You had uh, uh, Zoe Quinn, um, plot twist. Someone with no experience writing comics is actually really bad at it. Wow, who saw that one coming? Um, uh, what were the other ones? They were all terrible. That, that high level, oh my gosh, with Rob Sheridan, that was ridiculous. And then there was this other one called Free Love, and it looks like that one's not even coming out. Like... Um, this one, I think the next issue is the last issue and it's, it's all done. So, uh, this is probably the most excruciating, uh, I actually started reading this last night and I just couldn't finish it. It's the key thing I was thinking of is miserable. So SJWs live in, you know, uh, first world countries in lives of pretty much utter privilege and comfort and they fantasize every, all the time of being oppressed. Uh, so this is about uh, women, but um, hashtag it's really about men. So uh, this uh, started off as uh, lesbian witches, and then it turned into the laziest ripoff of Cabin in the Woods you could ever conceive. Uh, padded ridiculously. This is only issue five. I feel like I've been reading this for a year. Actually, I, I felt like I was reading this issue for a year. So we've got lots of this. It's like... <laughs> women right I mean come on men I mean seriously getting pretty for them <laughs> like what is that so she's um, the other thing that's, that's really sad about this is I wouldn't say this is a career destroyer but I've I have not seen a good artist be this bad uh, since like the days of Igor Cordy Igor Cordy was a guy I think he was from Kosovo uh, it was one of those 1990s East European wars. And uh, he's good. You know, he had a very European style, but I liked his stuff a lot. And then the X office started using him for freaking every fill-in. And 
um, he was like this, actually like almost a rising star. And then they started giving him books where he had like a one week turnaround. And it was the most sloppy trash. And it destroyed his reputation. He even mentioned it. He disappeared for like five, ten years. He came back with a uh, miniseries for Image and he was talking about this. But this is Mirka Andolfo, who is a fantastic artist. And weirdly normal for the comic book industry. Um, and look, like that's embarrassing. That's not even a layout. That's just trash. And one of the things I'm wondering, it's like, yeah, I understand, like, monthly schedule is kind of hard, but um, I'm almost just wondering if she just realized, like, oh, this is, like, shit. Like, nobody cares uh, about this book. So they very, very slowly uh, found out they were witches, and they got the husband who has been a complete piece of shit, like, every single time he's ever done anything. Like I said many times, or recently, I kind of wasted a year and a half because you could have just said one thing. SJW politics and ideology is bad because it makes books boringly predictable. Oh, I wonder if the white guy with blonde hair is going to be evil and be an asshole to women every single appearance. And yet, that's what he does. I wonder if all the women are going to be frenzies with each other. Of course, they are. I also, one of the things I was laughing about this is, um, oh, how many times have we seen this? And oh my gosh, down. Yay. Um, is, uh, one of the things that was making me laugh is that, uh, where is it? It's such a boring book. Is that all the men, uh, look like Carrie Brownstein from, uh, Portlandia when she addresses like a guy. Like, these are the most feminine looking men ever. So this is like, I feel like this is like a person who's never talked to a person and only watched TV show. The plot is literally, the boss is coming over and we've got to impress him with a dinner party. It's like, what the hell episode of Bewitched and or the Flintstones did you take this from? And I, I think you're being pseudo ironic, but my own parents didn't live in this era. This is like my grandparents' era. And it wasn't that much. It was just mainly a hack plot for sitcoms. So um, they discover they have powers, and they're all gas-cleaning it up. Um, girl crew. Oh, my gosh. Guess what this girl's witch power is? <laughs> Talking to cats. Oh, my gosh. I wish I could talk to my 12 cats. Um, I would tell them that they are amazing. Um, they even do a girl you're amazing in here. Um, oh my god, it's a man. It's a man. Um, so then she, they're like, you're under arrest for not being a man. <laughs> look at this. All, look, everyone, all the men look like Carrie Brownstein. <laughs> what the hell is going on? So this is shit. The whole thing has been shit, but the whole concept has been shit. The Vertigo Comics started... Uh, 25 years ago, and it was the idea of, you know, hey, <laughs> it was one, it's like when Grant Morrison, you know, smoked his weight in peyote and said, you know, oh, I've got an idea. Well, that's not, that's not a Scottish accent. Whatever. I've got an idea. What if I put the most popular DC superheroes on the team they're famous for being on? <laughs> Like, this is fucking it was fantastically successful. He's like, what if I put Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman, and Flash, and Green Lantern on the Justice League? <laughs> you didn't have to go to a freaking uh, mountaintop in the, you know, forests of Mongolia <laughs> to get that very, very simple idea. So it was a very simple idea. Take a very promising, or, uh, well, no, they weren't even promising. They were already established, you know, Pretty much. All of them were established. You know, Garth Ennis, freaking Grant Morrison, Neil Gaiman. It's like, what if you took the best writers we have and gave them their own imprint? And then you had Vertigo. And then you got this. It's like, what if we, and this is just like the thing with Kwanzaa, what if we ruthlessly and cynically tried to um, monetize racial strife, battle the sexes, racism like there's no way you can just the, the average person on the street reading one of Eric Esquivel's 
uh, scripts. Like, you can't say, this is proudly racist. Like, it's openly hateful of a race of people. Uh, how does that get past anyone? How did this entire thing fly? You're grabbing people with no experience. You're grabbing people with no interest in their books. Like, Mirka Andolfo obviously has no interest in this. You know, she signed on. Oh, Hex Wives. Okay, cool. Girl Power. Whatever. It's a good title. And what do you get? So, congratulations, Vertigo. You fired yourself. Um, honestly, this seems to me like a career ender. Like, just like, where do you go from here? Where do you go from permanently sully in in what sully in sully in the name of vertigo like this vertigo is now laughable it's trash it's a ruined you know ip or whatever you call it trademark uh, imprint line it's stupid what did you get you know it's a funny thing they wanted back pets, and, and in the end, that's all they got. <laughs> we want to uh, stroke our own egos and have uh, 12 weirdos on Twitter say that we are amazeballs. Congratulations. You, I'm sure you actually probably got that. You didn't get anything else. So, fired. Anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you still subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone. I give them to the GoFundMe and the Indiegogo. And I'm a couple... Let me know if this is uh, a skippable week for new comics. Uh, with the Captain Marvel movie, I got enough comics to take me through Friday. But then I also have, um, I have uh, Mesmo Delivery, this hardcover that I've wanted for like 10 years. Um, I've got How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way. I ordered it's just been sitting on the shelf for like a month. I've got Batman year two. I've got some old good Marvel comics that have been in my glove compartment for like six months. I don't hear anyone really talking much about comics coming out this week. So tell me if this is a skippable week. Anyway, thanks for watching.